Um, first of all, thank you everybody for, for here today. And it definitely meant to be a conversation. So, so if you wanted to uh, move forward, get commingled a little bit, but I understand still social distancing, but I'll, I, I don't want it to be a formal sort of lecture and audience, I think. So it's meant to be a conversation, but I, I am going to uh, start by sharing some background and some inspiration um, specifically and later talk about um, how this body of work started. Uh, and one big goal today for me is I'm going to really practice slowing down. Uh, I find myself um, get nervous uh, and I think it's normal for, for anybody, uh, public speaking, maybe not, not everybody, but I'm one of the shy, shy, very shy introverts. So um, being put on the spot, definitely uh, something that I tend to sort of speed up and and not uh, slowing down. So the goal today, and uh, it's slowing down because it's the essence of the work. Uh, it's really about leaving space and slowing down and um, being in the present moment. So my big goal. Uh, so I will um, start just talk a little bit about my background that being born in Taiwan and, and many of the information it doesn't really matter for, for the audience to, to know in order to um, understand the work or feel the work. Uh, but I thought it might be interesting uh, to know a little bit about my background. So I, I was born and grew up in Taiwan. And I think that big part of it I found it relevant, um, me as artist and also as this body of work is that Taiwan is a very small island and it's 23 million people. So it's highly populated, very densely. And so I grew up in that sort of endless islands of city, so to speak, you know, it kind of, but we do have mountain area and such, uh, but to me growing up in, in this, such a densely populated space, this, um, the sense of personal space and just even the sense of psychological space is, um, is didn't, uh, didn't feel that way at all. It's, um, so, so it's in a way that in a, as a person that is, seems like constantly looking for the sense of personal space, growing up, it just uh, it's a impact my, my, me as a person as my work. Um, so and then um, space is a, a definitely something that uh, affected me uh, in many ways. And um, part of um, the work that I am doing is a lot of things that the fact that I'm in the United States is when I was grew up in Taiwan, the education and the cultural um, tradition in Taiwan is more in a way that for my personal opinion is more um, restricted, more structured, it's very, have to do this, do that. Um, it's not as much as sort of focus on individuality. It's really, uh, in, in a lot of Eastern culture, it's more about community and that's really wonderful. But in a way, it's very, um, I wouldn't say likely, but um, in my case, um, grew up in that situation, feel like this uh, opportunity or space for self-expression or individuality sort of not so encouraged. Um, you are encouraged to think for other first and being part of the community. And as a, as a middle child um, and as a female um, that was grew up being taught just listen and listen and learn, but conversation is very rare in education when I'm growing up. I'm sure it's changing now, uh, but growing up in education or even in a daily life social, it just about listening. Um, and so, so in a way that I found that when, whenever I have opportunity to make new work, like in art, not art school, but elementary school when the art and craft class, that's become one of the opportunity sort of for me to be myself. And I think a lot of people feel that way is, I'll let you to express yourself and particularly feel really um, needed and desired as someone just kind of being asked to sort of just be quiet and, and that just a tremendous amount of space for freedom. Whatever I feel at that time, nobody judging it because they don't care. Um, so, so in a way that art become an expression, uh, outlet for expression. 
though when I, as much as I love uh, those sort of activity expression quality in the work, uh, in the artistic um, making work, making art, but it was not encouraged, it's not practical. Uh, and again, it's a cultural at the time that it's just not an option. It's just like, you know, entertain it, but no way. Uh, so my parents would be saying that if you're going to be somewhere else, something else, you want to be go to college, you need to go to thinking about what you're going to do after your degree. So my option was either go to nursing school or, or being a teacher uh, at the time, so you can guarantee you had uh, you can make a living. And so um, so I ended up with my first undergraduate degree in Taiwan was in nursing. So I finished my four years of school and get my license, uh, but I never, I never make a penny out of that um, education. Though I never regret that because I thought I just told my parents that I really want to finish it because it just sort of I started it, finish it, and so my parents, parents is not disappointed me or feel like I'm wasting their support and money. But I know that when I was a nursing, I, I love biology. That's why I become interest in med medicine and but when I practice in the hospital I just know that that's not for me um, because it wasn't physically hard it's just psychologically really hard to see people dying and sick and, and, and the parent the, the patient the family that just psychologically is something that I don't think I can deal with because I think I just have such a empathy toward this individual human being so I just um, feel like I'm not able to manage it in order to give in to patients. Because if I couldn't overcome that, how can I be there for the patients? So, so I gratefully to have that experience and knowing that's not for me. And um, so after that, I decided I really wanted to, I really cannot, I, uh, in my life, I really have to be an artist. Uh, I have to give a try. So, so I convinced my mom to sort of like give me a, a, a try. So I decided, and I won't get into too much about why United States, I, but one of the reasons is um, thinking about like, it, I was looking for artistic practices and the work come up from the West, just um, the ideal individuality, the expression, just a lot more um, space for more accepting and more experimentation and it's more explosive, I guess. So, so at that time I was young and, and just wanted to sort of express to sort the of inner angst of, of life. Um, so the film um, was a, a good opportunity for that. So I came to United States um, in 1995. And so I went to undergrad and graduate again to, to, do, um, to undergo those formal uh, art education. Um, so so um, speak, uh, sort of jumping forward, um, so I graduated and I was fortunate enough I applied for a job after my graduate school. No intention to stay in the United States because I, I wanted to pursue art and that's all I want to do. I was thinking about I finish it and I go home. Um, and But um, I was fortunate enough, I, I give it a try by I apply for a job I'm here. I was here, so I thought, oh, I'm just give it a try to apply for a job everywhere. I think I applied for hundred uh, different university college. Cost me a lot because at the time we still have to produce slides. Uh, so, so, but I say this is one chance. I have a few months to get this out. If nobody wants to hire me, that's just the fate that I'm not meant to be in this country. So, so I give it a try. I do have quite a few. Quite a few offering and, and May College of Art being in Portland was one of the tough choices because I love Portland, just the fact that it's on the ocean and the school. So small and, and uh, but it's full energy. So so it just feel a really a good fit. So so I'm lucky enough so I came to um, May College, College of Art and Design right now. Um, hire me as a full time teaching at Mecca since two thousand and one. So, so the, I've been uh, teaching at Mecca since then, um, and now I'm getting to, to this. So a um, few years ago, I was lucky enough to uh, have a sabbatical, um, I think 2018. Uh, and so teaching is very demanding, uh, and definitely grateful to have a way to make a living. So my parents 
and now worry about me, or I don't have to go back to, to be a nurse that I don't think I can manage to, to handle uh, being a nurse. Um, so, so that sabbatical was really critical that allowed me to sort of take a break from teaching uh, and have some time to even just be in my own body and to, to think, uh, think about what my work, uh, I want my work to be like. So it's a lot of time there to really just sort of be reflective. And um, then I, uh, during that year, I applied for a grant to um, study landscape architecture um, in Harvard at, um, University, uh, Harvard University Graduate School of Design. So it's architecture school. So um, I spent um, that time to really learn about landscape architecture. Um, I've always been interested in architecture architecture, but um, being in Maine really made me think about the land uh, and, and the environment and, and the build and the nature. So, so I decided to explore landscape architecture. And um, so that, that experience influenced me quite a bit, although it's not obvious. Uh, I just want to put myself to something that I don't know, uh, which is landscape architecture. I have no idea about that. That was really profound. Let me thinking about a lot of things that is um, encouraged to, to really pay attention to things that you don't see. And for example, that in landscape architecture, you think about drainage um, or the long term thinking about you planting a tree, you have to think 10 years. So a lot of things that you don't, um, you have to consider. If you don't think about it, you're going to be a disaster. Uh, you know, you know the, even the grading, the direction of water. So, um, so and, and just the process of making models uh, for, for landscape architecture project that sort of breaking me, breaking me out of my normal uh, way of thinking and doing my own work typically. So, so that I start thinking about landscape and, and also the sabbatical allow me to have time to spend um, in the woods um, and in this cabin out in Western mountain of Maine. Uh, and so I spent a few months just sort of being there and it was snowy. And so, so just um, that experience of really quietness and, and this sort of snow covered landscape and just no, and just purely silent. Well, I wouldn't say purely silent, but just really quiet and um, no people and no noise and nothing's moving, occasionally maybe tree move a little bit, but the, in a distant landscape, just super quiet. And, and it was just uh, so, such an incredible space. I feel I'm accepted and I can be in there and there's, uh, it's just really precious space that I, I really desire. And I'm thinking about how do I create work that provide that sense of space, psychological space, and, and um, allow anybody to sort of go in. And um, and I always just really little, really enjoy this moment that I able to just kind of space out. And, and I like, like a better term, it's just sort of like you don't, don't think and just sort of just in the zone and just not think about anything else and just be there. So. So I sort of try to um, have allow making something allow you to do that. You, you something there to grab you, but without demanding too much of your in, intention that for you to sort of like um, flatter your thought, your eye. Um, so, um, so that that sense of openness and that quietness was definitely uh, a big inspiration during that like a snowy winter, and. Um, in and uh, in similar situation, not just the sort of snowy mountain. That that was just one of the example that I found really uh, inspirational. And the one of the example that I put it into that video projection is sort of uh, in the cold, there's a foggy uh, landscape. And so this idea that you don't see things clearly just sort of allow you. Um, uh, sometimes when you're not able to see things clear, it's a good thing. So, so because when, when you see too clearly, then you just focus on, oh, that's tree, that's a bird, that's houses. And, and so that, that sort of foggy and not able to see things clearly 
and uh, allow you to sometimes um, think clearly, hopefully. Then coming to this body of work that is definitely was starting from 2018 when I was on sabbatical and right after I, I went through uh, landscape architecture and some of the transparency that I've been using also directly um, from the experience that we using vellum transparency and I'm really loving that material of sort of fogginess with it and we also working with uh, some uh, translucent soap um, so just uh, it's all things that I have really become really fascinated about about transparency and and the, how much uh, I like to see enough but not too much. Um, and another thing that I will um, talk about uh, a little bit before I open up for that is all my work before this point is really about sort of searching for that sense of space of expression. I talked about earlier on like just like this opportunity to just be drawing expressive. Uh, I, I experiment with, experiment with many different sort of um, medium dimension and I, I've been working with installation, sculpture, painting, drawing, photograph, uh, all, my, all different stages of my life as artists. Um, but I found myself um, was searching for, for sort of psychological space and um, physical space in installation. And a lot of times that when something that's on the wall, um, I, I feel like I always struggle to thinking about this idea of how do I uh, create a piece of work without frame, right? So, so a lot of times you do a piece of painting or drawing and then end up have to thinking about framing and in order to put it on the, on the wall. And so I was really anti-frame for, for a long, long time because um, I feel like the word should exist itself without using frame because the frame a lot of times it's kind of become hard to become part of the piece and you could but it's, um, it's also very expensive so so this idea of frame framing is become really it's something that I grapple with that I'm sort of thinking about a lot and so this body of word that in fact is sort of reversal that I'm thinking about you actually frame the framing is Intent, integral part of it, so the piece starting with frame um, before anything. So, so the frame offers that sense of uh, frame of reference that to give you sense of focuses. So you have the contrast of focus and unfocusedness um, in the behind the epoxy glass. So, so you're able to sort of able to have that. So, um, I don't know if that's clear or not, but but that's definitely what's intended. The clarity. Um, of frame is allow you to, to contrast that. Um, so, and I thank my partner Nathan that he helped me quite a bit to making some of the frame are a bit ah uh, shape. Um, so, uh, and I, I just starting with something square format and then really thinking about this idea of more um, a bigger vista and a panoramic kind of view. So, so some of that they drawn in. That the three panel pieces uh, come after those two panels. Uh, so, so in a way, I really want to create a sense of landscape, uh, sort of this wideness, of this stuff. Uh, and so I, I have the I had those square frame, but they are square. But I want them to be sort of more horizontal, like landscape. And therefore, um, I that's the reason I put three together uh, instead of just one or two. So. And, and because it come after those two, I was thinking about um, this idea of have the color sort of breaking the space, so to speak. So for example, those yellow and green, they are fading out so that they interact the edge of the frame. And so it's just when they are sort of running through the wall of the frame, so like have a sense of movement in the, in the piece. Same thing for this piece too. So I want the, that apparently black uh, shape to sort of sort of moving through the frame. Um, so they, they are connected through that. Um, I don't know if that's clear. So so that's also um, the empty frame sort of give a sense of the, the space that it was suggested connecting um, the three panel become a one space. So the black sort of moving through the space. Um, so. Yeah, 
And so, so it's very, um, it's not reference to anything specific. It's, it's really abstract. And, and I think that some of it, I just wanted to sort of, um, so the colors are definitely affecting the, the feeling of it. Some is more sort of energetic, more warm. Um, but that piece, I really just want to sort of have a, uh, suggested something kind of moving through those frames. But the, the, the plexiglass and the frost chair really uh, are sort of try to create that um, sense of sort of uh, one is fogginess of sort of not clearly, but second, most important is this idea of depth. Like, think that if you, you know, we can see the, the depth of the frames, but in a way that hopefully I feel like it looks like it's much further and deeper. And so that's sort of what I try to do. So it's almost this sort of shallow and small frame that kind of creates a sense of deeper and wider space. So, um, so yeah, it's really more about depth. Uh, and, and sort of space that I, I use that um, plexiglass. So, so it's not as much as filter, but it's also kind of try to play with your visual perception, feel like it's deeper than you see. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's good. Because then for me, like I like, to, especially with the pink wall display, when the mock is like, like the mock of the color, then yeah, that has that. I don't know if like that's rather than like the immediacy of the process, you know, like, mm. like if there was color also on the plexiglass, mm. you know. So yeah, I really, <coughs> I really like that there. And also as I wanted to talk about the idea that yeah, maybe actually it's only on the pictures, but it's also on the images. Maybe you could talk a little bit about your process of choosing the plexiglass because that's a big one. Process? Like the effect that you, like what you experienced throughout the process of just directing the, the, the experiment with certain materials. Sure. Uh, all right. So, yeah. So, so I think uh, pretty much try out any sort of translucent material from uh, tracing paper to vellum at different. Mm -hmm thicknesses and many layers and also plexiglass different frosted and also different thicknesses and space between the plexiglass to the back of it so this is all critical about degrees of diffusiency and also how deep the the frame is uh, so if you give you too shallow they become too clear you can see exactly what it looks like so so the depth is important and um so yeah, those are uh, technical things. So yeah, they take quite a bit of time to find out a perfect sort of um, texture because it, it do sometimes, I don't want the surface become too, to uh, draw too, too much attention. Sometimes the surface of plexiglass have some texture uh, and I, I want it to be as little texture as possible. So you don't, you are not aware of what you're looking. So it's really looking deeper rather than stop you from looking inside so um, so the one clear thing that you see is just the edges of the frame so everything else sort of should be feeling like far away one, I really want the word to really emphasize the nothingness the word really about nothingness um, so it's not about yellow or green or the black that's working it's really about space everything else so so I feel like what everybody need is that space and, and I, I want the space back to the, the viewer. A lot of times that um, my earlier was really about, you know, gestural marking um, and some word, a performative word that's making a statement or giving some visual wow. Uh, but I, I sort of reach a point that I feel like I, I want to give the space back to the audience. I will provide that space. Uh, so. So in a way that um, uh, offer that sense of peaceful, calm space, I feel like I need it, but hopefully other people feel that it is, is a, I'm not sure comforting is not the, word, not the right word, but it's just something that allows you to be at peace at, at, at for your, uh, uh, be, just, be, just be yourself, I guess, in a way that just be in a space. Um, so, 
So yeah, um, and uh, and um, that piece maybe I can and briefly talk about that because that's a sort of a study of of the light and color. So all four of them, um, uh, the so the the first one on the right and the second one on the right, the depth of reversal. I think that's clear about that, and the. Uh, the third one from the right, um, or the second one from the left, uh, the color is only in the depth of the frame, so it's actually not in the uh, in a square at all. So it's it's something on the side, on the side of the frame. So so it's a study of sort of like how the light and color and the depth and plexiglass relationship um, that um, that that's sort of a study of that. Um, so anything else? So so um, so when first um, Annika invited me to have this uh, exhibition and, and kind of envision and putting this body of work together. And first of all, before I forget, I have a lot more work and, and new work, and and I feel really happy about we about we decide not to show, uh, and which is a really difficult decision because you spend all the time and energy like. But uh, it was one of the difficult and most important decisions for the show, in a in a way that the pe the, the space is uh, the exhibition and the work both is about spaces. So last last being in here allowed the piece uh, to breathe and also uh, without being too close together. That was the one of the most important decision. And thanks to Anika to um, to help me to kind of. Okay with not showing all the new work that we create and to just allow the work, the exhibition itself uh, to become um, manifest to the essence of the, the project. And so just speaking with the, the window space, I I've been I, I also as an installation artist as well. So I've been working a lot with physical space, creating installation. So I that kind of interesting space that I'm really fascinated about how do I create a piece of work to activate that space and allow us to look at space differently. So I was think, really thinking about can I make a large scale of those paintings um, or in concept with a window. So so that's sort of the one um, idea I was thinking about. Okay, I want to create a large scale painting, so to speak, by using sort of the idea principle that with a smaller scale to, to that space. And um, so that's one. And uh, secondly, uh, is I really would love to making bigger piece uh, as well, but uh, it's just a limitation of my studio and, and big part is budget. So maybe I will um, have Keith help me with a, a really large uh, and wonderful horizontal um, uh, frame to do that. But I do thinking about larger. So so a lot of time I, I uh, those are earlier work are smaller, more manageable and. And I have very tiny studio, so and moving too much. Um, you know, you guys all know that like Portland. I've been we've been moving different apartments until very recently. So um, just try to find a space to the store and to work. And able to step back, uh, step back, look at work is actually uh, challenging. Um, so yeah, I I definitely really would love to do bigger pieces like those bigger one and the wider one are more recent piece. And um, that, yeah, those are bigger pieces. So I definitely thinking about larger. Um, and transportation is another um, challenge as well. Um, maybe one day I'll get a truck so I can um, put a big piece. Uh, so yeah, f financial and also physical sort of studio size and transportation is all the things considered. And, and I think that part of me, because I, I'm foreigner in a way that I'm moving, moving around a lot, and so this idea of things that is portable, able to be marginal or easy to take apart, it is a big part of my practice for a long while. So I think that I do think about how to transfer. So like they can become all the singular frame and to stack it on the sides. So there's, that's something I continue to think about about possibility. Um, I become very conscious, and I don't talk about this at at all. This might be the first time talking about this. Um, you know, we're, we're in Taiwan, it's just like, 
don't normally see far because uh, everything is like really in close proximity. And seeing sky, that's that's good. Uh, but but I just remember um, first time I come to the United States, it's so, the space is so large and it was just such a luxury. And space is is a luxury still for me. And and so and I guess it's all relative. But but in a way that having space and also you know this idea of view, right? So. Um, some people have this sort of privilege have some places have, you know, people maybe have well to do that can have view, ocean view or big bad vista. Or some, some people don't necessarily have to be, you know, wealthy or but they're lucky to, to go to places. But often um, that having that openness and the beautiful view is it, a luxury. And, and so that's something I've been thinking about that how do I create that sense of space that it doesn't have to be larger necessarily but just sort of um sort of uh make it become more accessible that that kind of space um so so because I, I think that just the visual perception because when you go to somewhere that has this beautiful open view of this mountain or ocean that automatically affecting your state of uh mind and also your psychological probably mostly slow down it's like the the beauty of it and and that is definitely affecting um a person's well-being about how calm and and how stressed uh because it you know if it's someone living in a, a place with 24 7 noise and, and very in close proximity which you know kind of experience all that uh in a very confined space and and not able to see tree or see out uh, you look at other people's window so those kind of experience sort of really made me thinking about the idea of perceptual space and how it affecting our well-being um, in psychological space. But, but that one thing about teaching that is, I feel that free me from making more that for a commercial reason. So I, I don't feel like the pressure have to sell my work to, to make a living. And so that's a conscious decision. Um, therefore, um, and I think big part of also having a solo show in this great opportunity that allowed me to make a bigger work. Otherwise, I will continue making work that I probably square and then put like five together, make it big, make it easy to transport. But this opportunity really allowed me to, to say that, oh, I can allow to make some bigger work uh, that I really want to see it. I really purely think about I really want to see the work in a larger sense. Um, so um, that really is this opportunity of this show allow me to make bigger work, which is really um, amazing because otherwise I'm going to continue limiting myself with right. what's fit on my wall. So I do think about sound a little a, a bit uh, and, and I appreciate silence. And so um, Nathan and Carl actually did a, a performance piece that in here uh, and so try to sort of Try to capture uh, that sense of space with sound, um, but not so much sort of sound and visual coming together necessarily. So mm -hmm. they just sort of leave the visual alone. And, and, and I have Nathan and Carl sort of, I wrote a piece for them to perform. Uh, and so they interpret, interpret my score. And so it's just a lot of silence um, in between. So. So yeah, I, I do think about it, and I might go back to continue working with sound uh, as well, but it's definitely something that I've been thinking about. For me, like a, every project, it needs to be a new learning process. So so if it's something that I've done it before and it become familiar, uh, it, I um, feel like I need to create new challenges for, my, for myself to learn from. So each each project is a new learning process. So. So in a way, either it's how the light working in the frame, like the light and shadow and then the color responses to, and, and so, so yeah, it's definitely, hopefully each project, each panel is a new learning. And so it's, it's definitely are very playful um, you know, in all the pieces. So, so yeah, it definitely, um, this, this seems really simple, but it takes forever. It's very interesting that it's so minimal, it feel like really quick and easy, but they are super slow process. And um, just this example, I have a stair that for so long to resolve 
how thick the paint need to be and how tapered that need to be and what the positioning need to be and how high. So, um, so yeah, it, it just says some of the very seemingly uh, uh, easy decision is actually uh, tricky for me because like how big the square need to be um, and, and the position. So, um, but yeah, it, it's definitely a very playful process. So a different saturation of color. Uh, the color used are actually a lot more brighter, obviously, because it's kind of diffused. So, so in a way that some of the color, if you don't have the you know plexiglass in front of it, would be could be very difficult to look at, uh, even unpleasant to look at. And and but after have that, it becomes softer. And so one of it is I want the work uh, have some kind of glowing energy coming from, although it's no light. And um, and but just have some that sort of radiating sort of energy coming from. So um, without literally using electricity, and so therefore sometimes the color might be really sort of like Florence and orange. I actually tried some Florence and oranges, um, not quite there yet, but um, some of those really hard for the eye to see could be really interesting to see. So some pieces definitely are more reference to landscape uh, that more. Um, that round. And I also feel like uh, um, this idea of sort of the, 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 or the landscape, the, the vista, definitely this idea of peripheral vision that is, seems important to me at some point that not just about the depth, it's also about the width of it. So some of the work that I just really wanted to get as long as possible. Um, so, so yeah, I, I do think about li literal landscape and so some of the work is, it is directly thinking about that landscape uh, that we're familiar about without being too obvious. So for example, this piece, um, I deliberately choose pink because I don't want to be green or brown. That might be too direct about reference to landscape or familiar. Mm -hmm. So in, in a way that I, I try to kind of find color that is shape and color that hinted but without describing it. So.